So I figured we could get this done real quick. Now, this is the year in review. Not sure how we do it in 12 minutes, but we do. I am going to try to actually do my own video on this, so I'll have a lot more to say about this than what I say in this video. And I'll also be hosting a couple podcast episodes with, uh, well, I'll leave those names unmentioned, but a couple of podcast episodes talking about this very topic. So I won't get too, I'm not going to get on my soapbox or anything, but uh, I might make a comment here and there. Let's see what they've got for us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside Star Citizen. I'm Jared Huckabee, and this is it. It's the end of the year. The much anticipated Alpha 318 is being hammered away on by developers and citizen testers. Man, I bet they really wanted to be able to say it was at least in PTU by this. I said I wouldn't make comments. Here I am. The like, and it's that time where we look back and reflect on many of the more memorable events and additions to the Star Citizen experience in a special episode we like to call the Star Citizen Year in Review 2022. Because because sometimes you just call a thing what it is. Let's get to it. We'll start things off with some of the big ticket feature items, and perhaps none were bigger than the server cap increase, which saw the persistent universe po Oh, this isn't going to be chronological. This will be interesting. Population increased from 50 to 100, paving the way for things like Siege of Orison, changing the dynamic for events like Jump Town. And as you can see here, the collective re-entry of 100 simultaneous spacecraft and the loudest I've ever heard the VFX team giggle. Hey, you guys remember when you, we did that? Like they're gigglers. Three ships. <laughs> Player so refueling also made its debut in 2022, enabling the peer-to-peer -peer profession that allows for a new way to help your fellow citizens and make a buck along the way an important step ahead for the upcoming inclusion of the pyro system, where gas stations will be few and far between in the wide open and desolate wastes, where anarchy reigns and everyone must fend for themselves. It's basically Los Angeles on Black Friday. Were they just hosting some Starfarer low-flying sessions in pyro, and we're sitting here like twiddling our thumbs? I want a Starfarer low-flying session, Pyro. Come on now. In addition to refueling, the arrival of mining gadgets brought another refinement to that profession, providing new and improved means for making your fortunes out in the verse, and then coming back to liquidate that and almost everything else with the new selling mechanic, allowing players to finally clear out much of what filled their inventories for profit. Why can you make so much money in video games and not in real life? That's my mom asking. Not well, me. You don't find there were also plenty of new places to visit life. and have adventures, including from. a variety of new derelict spacecraft, both floating in space and crashed down on the surface of Stanton's planets and moons. These derelicts not only add to the visual texture and history of the persistent universe, they provide numerous opportunities for mission and loot gameplay as more and more continue to be added throughout this last year and the next. And the same can also be said for derelict outposts and rivers, which began with a single estuary on Microtech and continued to develop throughout the year into a watershed release included in the upcoming Alpha 318. But for me, the highlight of River Tech has been the ascendance of Will Hain to River Guy in the YouTube company. River Guy! I also really like, I think the River Tech changes have been one of the best looks at how they progress their tools, and it actually comes out with something like tangibly better. Granted, the rivers, we have a bunch of rivers on planets now, but they still don't really bring anything gameplay related to the game. But it's a good example, you know, do the same thing with, uh, I don't know, uh, lava. I don't know. Comments. More hospitals were added to the persistent universe in 22, as important an aspect as any for those of us who spend most of our time uh, waking up in medical beds rather than exploring the universe. Yeah. It's not that I'm bad, it's just that everyone else is better. Especially at racing, in the first of several community-initiated in-universe racetracks such as the Snake Pit, which began with the XGR racing community exploding in popularity this year and an exciting initiative within development to canonize creations from the players into the persistent universe proper that will continue in the upcoming Alpha 318 and beyond. And speaking of the community, much of what made Star Citizens 2022 special was created by the community itself, including recurring events like Fight or Flight, 
the largest 2v2 PvP dogfighting tournament in the verse, the Hurston Hurt Locker, a battle royal event on Magda that features lots of mayhem and death where almost anything goes and precious few survive, and the classic Daymar Rally, a canonized staple that kicks off each year with a 500km race with multiple divisions and loads of ground vehicle shenanigans. And in addition to competitive events, the role-playing Nice, Zark! Getting that hot spot, that's cool. ...and Star Citizen continue to evolve and take notice within both the community and development teams as players utilize tools within the game to report the news, create exciting narratives, and simply bring an increased sense of immersion to life in the persistent universe. And out of universe, the Bar Citizen World Tour kicked off as CIG staff traveled to cities, states, provinces, and countries around the world to break bread and tell tales with players from all walks of life. It's been a terrific return to form and a chance for players and developers to connect that will continue throughout 2023, so be sure you keep an eye on the website and socials for details and let us know when events are happening in your area. The Bar Other Citizens are pretty cool. I, it's, I mean, the best part of Star Citizen, the thing that's always kept it alive has always been the community, and I think they recognize that. They do a lot of things, as you can see here, to try and keep the community engaged, whether in the game or outside of the game. And, like, I think that's probably saved Star Citizen's butt many times. So this is, this is good stuff. Some people might think, you know, it's not necessary, uh, but these, this is the core of the community. This is... You know, some of us can't make it to these events, um, but this represents a lot of us, a lot of the people who make friends and do all that stuff. And I think this is pretty important. We're trying to do one next year, at Citizen Con in October. So if you guys are looking for one to drop by, consider the Tomats. Notable events were the Battle of the Bricks, where the Star Citizen and EVE Online community teams came together for charity in a battle of building blocks, trivia, weird challenges, and whatever a wolf fish is. It's terrible. Terrible is what Wolfish is. I don't know what that is. And then this year, Citizen Con kicked off with the official Journey to 4.0 initiative with presentations from developers on exciting new gameplay systems like resource management, master modes, and investigations. The return of Chris Roberts to peel the curtain back on Squadron 42 developments that will benefit the persistent universe in the future. And we debuted the only constant, the spacecraft where ISC, SCL, and more will emanate from for the foreseeable future. And it still has a few tricks up its sleeve. We hope to show you in 2023 and beyond. Uh, that was when they did all of like their acting and stuff. They always got to throw something like that in there. Never change CIG. But back in the verse, while the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo and Invictus continued to be highlights of the year, the biggest dynamic event in Star Citizen's history happened with the Siege of Orison where the vicious Ninetales took control of the floating platforms surrounding Orison and waged a multi-stage battle against players in a first-of-its-kind mixture of Star Citizen's <laughs> FPS gameplay systems and- uh, I can just imagine them being like, the vicious Ninetales, and then it cuts to a scene of them like, turning in, in space and like, <laughs> glitching back and forth and running into the wall, because <laughs> they're, they're just not vicious most of the time. When they work, they work and it's fun, but a lot of the times they're just not working. This was still a pretty cool event. And I'm glad this turned into permanent missions that we can run because those missions are actually unique, you know. Urban FPS missions aren't a thing in this game, so it's nice that they're a regular mission now. The impetus for numerous technological improvements to the entire game as a whole, including the server cap increase we talked about before. And this year's ship showdown was a chance for community members to showcase their creativity in pushing their favorite ships and vehicles into contention to be named best in show at this year's IAE. And you can see some of that creativity here, and here, and here. The, Definitely the a highlight was pretty of each good. and every year. It's a good one. And speaking about ships and vehicles, let's do a rundown of all the new ones that made their way flyable and drivable in 2022, including the Hall A, Hover Quad, Mule, Centurion, STV, Scorpius, Corsair, Cutter, and C8R Pisces. And that brings us to now, and the impending release of Alpha 318. Impending. Which will add a whole lot more to this 2022 of Star Citizen highlights, including whole stripping salvage gameplay. Which will, which could, <laughs> 
Uh, are they gonna finish this video off being like, hey, we're going straight to live? Yes, you and your trusty multi-tool, reclaimer, or brand new vulture have a new means to make your fortunes. Hey, I got a question for you, uh, a question for you in, in the comments. I was thinking about this before. How long do you think the ships are gonna stick around after we stripped off the hull? If they're just completely useless, how long do you guys think they'll they'll be there because of PES? And do you think there's some kind of a threshold that you pass, like 20% of the hull is stripped, so it starts its timer to despawn, or like... I don't know, I was curious, how do you guys think that'll work? By finding and processing the remnants of space junk in the verse. This applies not only to destroyed player ships, but NPC hulks spawn throughout the Stanton system for you to discover and dismantle. The cargo refactor is here. The cargo refactor is here. Alpha 318 also brings with it the first iteration of the cargo refactor that will physicalize much of what we carry in our cargo holds and open up new avenues for cargo reclamation after disaster and potential piracy for the disaster causers of us out there. Oh my God, the first time, literally, this is the first time we're ever seeing disaster the cargo grid. And potential piracy for the disaster causers of us out so there. So briefly. <sighs> I'm looking at Tom. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So you don't have to orient yourself. Like, potential piracy that's at least for the something. disaster you don't have causers to orient of us the out box there. yourself. So you get it to the spot and it snaps I'm in place, at, at least for this iteration. It looks like a tier, uh, I don't know if it's tier zero or tier one, but it looks like a very basic iteration that will need a lot of graphics work. But I don't know that. And just potential from piracy that one for the disaster shot, causers of us out there. Seeing how it snaps. <gasps> I'm looking at time. At least it doesn't snap the box. It snaps a hologram to let you know where the box is going to go. That's nice. We'll There's also the new PTV racetrack soon. in Orison that aims to provide a new recreational activity for those looking for the low stakes challenge of buggy competitions or for the players that go out there and create emergent opportunities that I have no doubt none of us are prepared for. Can't wait to see what you do here. <laughs> and the revitalization of Korea and the addition of additional sandbox prison activities Two components of an overall what is over that? Is that granola? What is that crap? Oh my god. It looks like somebody just went outside and got mulch and like put it on a little cheese platter and put some glass over it. Said, have this with your coffee. You scrubs. Looks gross. Come on. Overhaul to the crime stat system that will be more lenient on what sends you to prison while providing new opportunities to remove crime stat before going and after escaping. Six new persistent universe racetracks based on community creations that will bring players to several of the lesser traveled areas of the stand system and allow them to test their metal against others with new gateway and timer functionality being added alongside them. New Orison missions that run on the surrounding platforms when Siege of Orison is resting from all the mayhem. New sand cave archetypes in the Daymark crash site introduced... <laughs> We, he passed over the he passed over the sand cave so quickly I couldn't even make a joke about how there was nothing really to talk about other than you can walk in them. I think they're beautiful, but they really are just caves. The brand new Mercury and 600i derelicts being added to the persistent universe, and two new exciting technological advancements this year with the implementation of the Gen 12 renderer and persistent entity stream. Yo, he's talking like 318 is out. They better drop it at the end of this video. Come on now. Which both convert the current persisting universe to new graphical and technological foundations that serve as the new basis for persistent universe's continued development, as well as set the stage for Star Citizen to realize its fullest potential in the years to come through server meshing, increased player and resource caps, and the addition of new star systems like Pyro, Nyx, and beyond. No, I don't want to hear and beyond. I want to hear the next name. And going on right now is Luminalia. Where I feel like they've kind of, sorry to sidetrack, I feel like they've really pumped the brakes on mentioning anything about Nyx in order to avoid the same thing that happened with Pyro. Because we got some things about Nyx planet creation going on, I think in like early 2021 maybe. And then they just, no, they dropped it. And I think they realized what happened with Pyro with the fatigue of mentioning it year after year and it not coming. They're like, okay, we're just going to wait on Nyx until we have nothing else you know, to to take up the uh, the airwaves and um, we know it's going to be here, which is probably good. That's a good idea. Keep doing that, guys. Where players can log in each and every day to redeem a variety of in-game gifts, including holiday sweaters, undersuits, new paints for the 100i, Avenger, and more. Remember, it is 12 days, folks. 
and a sextant that Ben Curtis has really wanted to get in there for a while. I mean, it's cool. So what did we learn this year? As long as well, it's I'd say a game. whole heck of a lot, but at the core of it all, to me, this year seemed to be about celebrating and renewing that connection between player and developer that's been at the heart of this project since it first launched in 2012. It's been said often and probably by folks much better than myself, but it bears repeating over and over and over again that none of this happens without your continued involvement, whether that's playing the game, uh, discussing on Spectrum, reporting on Make the Issue Council, special. Uh, supporting through pledging, I play encouraging the game. through Bar Citizens, creating and streaming through social media no, and actually, contests though. and the like, Shout or out to simply allowing us into your lives most weeks pays. while we share the who we are and what we do with you through ISC and SCL and the like. It's kind of ridiculous that I get to stand here on a spaceship and represent the work of over 800 strong with you, from game directors to QA testers, from major features like salvage and cargo down to little internal tools like asset validators. And I can hardly wait to see what 2023 has in store for us. This, this journey we're on can be exciting, rewarding, educational, consuming, and if we're being honest, a little frustrating at times. But there isn't another one <laughs> remotely like it in the entire game uh, industry, uh. with so many dedicated to bringing this universe of possibility to life. So, for one last time in 2022, for Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Happy holidays. Be so, safe. And we'll see you all here next year. All right. Sounds good, dude. Thank you. So they didn't announce 318. <laughs> really hopeful for that. Although, obviously, I would have already probably heard that. Um, you know what? Like I said, I've got a video. I'm not going to leave it all out here. My video is going to be a little more chronologically laid out. So it'll be kind of going through the quarters, what happened and what didn't uh, feature wise, ship wise. And of course, a little bit of the drama. I think they obviously wanted to make this mostly about the company. Um, mine's going to be about the development pro progress of the year. So I hopefully we'll have that out the last couple days of the year. But besides that, like I said, we'll be talking about this on the podcast a lot. Um, what people expected, what happened and you know, what they're disappointed didn't happen. But this is it. We will be coming back probably late January at best. There's going to be no roadmap updates. There's going to be no news. There's going to be um, not much going on. So I will probably be taking things easy in January because last year I remember it was very difficult to see the um, the kind of drop off in everything Star Citizen there without expecting it. So I will see you all in the streams and everything. I'll, we'll keep going. But in these videos, uh, in a couple months. Have happy holidays and have a good one.